Hi, and welcome to this video on Biblical Numerics. Um, we'll be discussing the 153 Great Dishes of John chapter 21. We'll be using the King James Pure Bible Search software. Download it for free, purebiblesearch.com. I encourage you to download the software and verify these patterns for yourself and uh, explore how the King James Code works. It's a real Bible code. The software is free, by the way. And in this video, we're going to discuss the 153 great dishes. And one, we're going to show that the number 153 is related to the number 666 and the number of the beast. Two, that the King James Bible is the preserved word of God. And three, that there is a real Bible code and the 153 great dishes will take us to that code. Okay, let's pick it up in John chapter 21, verse 1. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. The word these, case sensitive, as found in this verse, occurs 333 times in the New Testament, 999 times in the Bible, and 666 times in the Old Testament. These is referring to um, the previous events that occurred prior to this. Now, rep digit numbers like 666 are multiples of 37. Write the number 37 down. It is part of the code. We'll see it in Genesis chapter 1. Let's pick it up. John 21 verse 4. But when the morning was now come. What is the morning? The morning's light. Jesus is now come. The phrase the morning occurs 188 times in the King James Bible. That is a multiple of 47. Write that number down. 47 being related to light because there are 47 degrees between the tropics of Capricorn and the tropic of Cancer. The word book occurs 188 times in the King James Bible. The Bible says the entrance of thy word, words giveth light. Okay, let's continue. It says, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. The word knew occurs 74 times in the New Testament. 74 is part of the code. Write that number down. We will see it in Genesis chapter 1. The name Jesus has a value of 74 using this simple English cipher you see here. Okay, let's pick it up in verse 5. Then Jesus saith unto them, Children, have ye any meat? Okay, children uh, occurs in 148 verses of the New Testament. That is a multiple of 74. The phrase have ye occurs in 74 verses of the Bible any meat. Now meat is the word of God. So look at the phrase have ye. 66. Has a value of 66. There are 66 books in the Bible. Meat has a value of 39. 39 books in the Old Testament. I'm using this uh, the trigonal cipher which uses biblical numbers that are triangular such as 66, 153, um, has a value of 317, which is the 66th prime number. Okay, I'm claiming that the 153 great fishes has to do with the Word of God. The Holy Bible, you see using the reverse English, has a value of 153. Um, why the reverse? I have some theories about that, but if we reverse 153, we get 351, which is the 26th prime number. And if you add all these letters up, Z to A, you will get the number 351. Let's go back to John chapter 21, verse 5. You'll notice the word children is capitalized. Let's go to the first occurrence of that word in the Bible. It is in Daniel chapter 1. It's in the 851st chapter of the Bible. That is 37 times 23. Okay. Children in whom was no blemish but well favored and skillful in all wisdom, referring to the children of Israel that were brought captive to Babylon, including Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Look at this word whom. The word whom occurs 306 times in the New Testament. That is 153 times 2. And look what it says, Matthew chapter Matthew uh, Chapter 3, verse 17, 
And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Number 317, 66th prime number. Anyhow, whom? 153 times 2. If we go back to Daniel, you'll see children in whom was no blemish. Jesus was without blemish, so this is there's typology here. But well favored and skillful in all wisdom. There was none wiser than Jesus. Let's look at the word wisdom. Okay. All occurrences of the word wisdom occurs in 222 verses of the Bible. That is a multiple of 74. Okay. Also, what is interesting is watch. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat. What's Jesus saying? Children, have you any meat? And here we have children being appointed meat by the king but there's a catch because um daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat nor with the wine which he drank okay i'm trying to go quick here i'm trying to cover a lot of ground uh there's some very interesting uh uh gems here watch what daniel says prove Thy servants, I beseech thee ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Okay, let's look at water. Water occurs 396 times in the King James Bible. That's 66 times 6. The word pulse, that is basically food derived from seeds, such as uh, beans, okay, lentils. Look at Samuel 17, um, verse 28. Brought beds and basins and earthen vessels and wheat and barley and flour and parched corn and beans and lentils and parched pulse. Okay, what's Daniel want to eat? He's want to eat food derived from seed. That is very important. Seed. Okay. We go to the first occurrence of the word seed, and God said, He speaks 27 words here. This is part of the code. The code's based off the words that God speaks. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. 27 words spoken there. 27 books in the New Testament. Okay. It says, uh, after his kind. See, value of 74. Value of the name Jesus. It said fruit. Fruit. Value of 74. Again, the value of the name Jesus. Okay, and also notice that the book of Daniel is the 27th book of the Bible. Okay, and let's demonstrate the King James Code. It says, prove thy servants. Okay, and in the Old Testament, we see that the two the word prove and thy servants combine for one 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 that is 37 plus 74 write the number one 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 down it is part of the code one 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 being 37 times three okay back to john chapter 21 verse 6 and he said unto them look at the phrase and he case sensitive combined but said unto them has a value of six 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 what does he say? First word. Cast. Okay. Cast occurs in 151 verses of the New Testament. Why is the number 151 significant? It is the value of the phrase Jesus Christ. Okay. Now if we look at the total occurrences of cast, it, it occurs in 474 verses of the Bible. In 47 books again 47 74 being part of the code okay and he said unto them cast the net on the right side of the ship and ye shall find these are instructions for us as well I'm gonna show that okay the word net occurs 39 times in 37 verses 39 books in the Old Testament 37 being part of the code the word right okay occurs 66 times in the New Testament. Again, 66 books of the Bible. The phrase side of occurs 111 times in the Bible. 
And we're going to go to the last occurrence of the word ship here uh, soon. But the phrase, and ye shall. Okay, it occurs in 222 verses of the Bible. That is a multiple of 74. And the word bind. The final word Jesus speaks here. And the word bind occurs 47 times in the New Testament. Okay, let's focus in on the words that Jesus speaks. He speaks 14 words here. Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. Okay. Bear with me. Okay, what I want to show here is that these 14 words contain 47 letters. So uh, we have the final word, find, occurring 47 times in the New Testament and 47 letters in the 14 words that Jesus speaks. And again, 14 multiple of 7. All right, uh, back to John chapter 21. The phrase, and ye shall, 222 verses, multiple of 74. But if we look at the case sensitive, well, we have it in 147 verses. Um, why is the number 147 significant? That is the number of years that Jacob lives in. Where do we learn that? In the 47th chapter of the Bible. Not only that, the phrase here is wisdom. That's found in Revelation 13, 18 has a value of 147. Okay, back to John chapter 21, verse 6. Notice 216, 6 times 6 times 6. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Fishes occurs 27 times in the King James Bible, 27 books in the New Testament. Fishes has a value of 66 using simple English uh, ordinal gematria. Okay, back to John 21, let's look at verse 7. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter. Remember that word whom? 306 times in the New Testament, 153 times 2. The name Peter occurs a total of 158 times in 153 verses and 47 chapters. All three of these numbers are part of the code. Note the number 158, we'll see that in Genesis chapter 1. Okay, and notice he girt his fisher's coat um, for he was naked. Okay, the word naked occurs 47 times in the King James Bible. Think about Genesis chapter 2, we'll go there. But this is the 39th ver occurrence of the word naked, 39 books in the Old Testament. And it's in the 37th verse of containing the word naked in it. Okay, um, let's uh, look at verse 9. As soon as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon and bread. Fish and bread combined 396 times. 66 times 6. Remember, water also occurs 396 times in the King James Bible. Jesus saith unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Okay, the word bring, capitalized, as you see it there, occurs 47 times in the King James Bible. And let's look at what else is here. Ye have, the phrase ye have. Okay, in the New Testament, the phrase ye have occurs 153 times. This is not a coincidence. And the word caught. Occurs 37 times in the King James Bible. Okay, I'm generally giving you just the highlights of this code. I mean, we can uh, just look at all these words and phrases <clears throat> and find uh, the patterns to the code. Look, the phrase which he 37 times. Okay, remember 37 being a, a, a main part of this code. In fact, I'm going to show you the connection between the number 37 and the number 153 in Genesis chapter 1. Okay, you have 153. It's all right here. Okay, now Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes. 
for all uh, and hundred and fifty and three and hundred Okay, and hundred and fifty and three combined occur three hundred and six times in the Bible. That is one hundred and fifty three times two. Hundred fifty three combined case sensitive occurs one thousand two hundred and twenty two times. And we can see that that is 26 times 47, 26 words, or letters rather, in the English alphabet. And here we see a multiple of 47. Okay, let's uh, pick it up in verse uh, 15. Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. Now, 153 great fishes is more about lambs and sheep than it is about fishes. Uh, feed 77 verses of the King James Bible. And 77 is the value of uh, um, the name, the word Christ. Feed his lambs. Lambs has a value of 47. Okay. Now the word lamb occurs in 74, occurs 74 times in the Old Testament. Again, that's the value of the name Jesus. When we combine that with lambs, we see that the total then becomes 153. And what are lambs? Sheep. They are cattle. Cattle. And there's the number 151 again. We saw that. That's the value of the name Jesus Christ. So cattle in the Old Testament, 151 times. When we expand that to the New Testament, the total occurrences of the word cattle it totals up 153. We go to the first occurrence. This is the beginning of the sixth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind. Remember his kind, value of 74 using Demetria. Cattle and creeping things and the beasts of the earth after his kind, and it was so. 23 words spoken there. 23 is part of this code, although I won't detail it. Now, um, cattle is the first unique word on the sixth day. Every word that's preceded cattle so far has occurred in days 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of the creation. So cattle is the first unique word found on the sixth day. Day. And if we go to the 47 or the 153rd occurrence of the word cattle, it is John chapter 4. When we back up a little bit, we'll see that the, there's a very uh, interesting place is John chapter 4, verse 7. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. Okay, now. What's significant about this, if we just back up a little floor, back, back up a little further, now Jacob's well was there. Okay, so this is Jacob's well. What's interesting about that is that the name Jacob, using uh, just a simple he, uh, Hebrew, let's look at that real quick. Sorry, my internet's so slow. But in ordinal Hebrew, Jacob, the name Jacob, has a value of 47. And remember, Jacob lives to be 147 years old, and we learn that in the 47th um, book of the Bible. Okay, cattle. Now, that's not the only um, relationship between 153 fish and the cattle. If we go to Ezekiel chapter 47... Watch that number 47. Now we're in the 47th chapter of Ezekiel. Let's pick it up in verse 10. And it shall come to pass 
that the fisher shall stand upon it from Engedi even unto any glim. They shall be a place to spread forth nets. Their fish shall be according to their kinds as the fish of the great sea exceeding many. So many people have pointed out the relationship between Ezekiel 47 and John 21 concerning the fishes. And the word Eniglim, this is a place, it means fountain of calves or fountain of cattle or fountain of the two calves. However, bottom line is it's connected with water and cattle. What did we see in John chapter 4 verse 7? Jesus says, give me the drink and then that whole conversation and she's talking about Jacob and, and where his, and his cattle drink from that well. Okay, any glaim in the Hebrew, right here, this is a well-known Hebrew pattern, has a value of 153 using the Hebrew standard cipher as you see there. Okay, now let's look at the King James Code and Getty, or six times. We're interested in the number six. Even unto 151, value of the name Jesus Christ. Okay, now the total verse counts become 148. That's a value multiple of 74. And let's put the final word in there. Any claim. Now we see the total count is 158 occurrences. Remember, how many times did the name Peter occur? 158 times. I'm telling you that's part of the code. Um, We'll see that. The first count remained the same, a multiple of 74. Okay, let's examine some 666 patterns in Ezekiel 47, um, chapter 47, verse 10. Uh, the phrase shall be occurs in 666 chapters of the Bible. So it says, shall be according to their kinds as the fish of the great sea exceeding many. Shall be. 666 chapters. The word according. Okay, it occurs 666 times in the Old Testament. Okay, now that we're on the Hebrew, let's uh, examine another well known pattern in the Hebrew. It is the phrase sons of God. Job 38, verse 7. When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Okay, in the Hebrew, uh, the phrase sons of God, here's the Hebrew for that. You see, using the Hebrew standard, it has a value of 153. So let's go to the, let's look at the phrase son of God. Okay, son of God. Occurs 48 times and 47 verses. Now, if we look at the case sensitive referring to Jesus, it occurs 47 times in 46 verses. So we see the number 47 there. And notice Job 38, the 474th uh, chapter of the Bible. Oh, did we see that number earlier in the word cast? We sure did. Okay, so Son of God, lowercase. Let's look at that real quick. Okay, that occurs in Luke chapter 3, verse 38. Referring to Adam, it says, um, Son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. Luke chapter 3 is in the 47th chapter of the New Testament. And the phrase sons of God occurs in a very special place in the New Testament. John chapter 1. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Believe. That believe his name. Okay, the total is 157. That's the 37th prime. But when we look at the case sensitive, believe in his name combined 153 times case sensitive as found in uh, John 1 verse 12. Okay, let's go back to John chapter 21. Let's go back to verse 6. We're going to follow the instructions here. 216, remember, 6 times 6 times 6. Ship, 71 times. 
in the King James Bible. Now, we're significant about the number 71. Where does that occur? Using standard English, that is the value of the word God. Okay, so cast the net on the right side of the ship and ye shall find. What's on the right side? That's the New Testament. The Old Testament's on the left side. New Testament on the right side. Let's go to the last occurrence of the word ship, which is in the last chapter of the book of Acts. Acts chapter 28, that's 4 times 7. After three months, we departed in a ship of Alexandria, which was wintered in the isle whose sign was Castor and Pollux. So what's on the right side of the book of Acts? That's the epistles, namely the epistles of Paul. Okay, so let's go to Romans 1, first word. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. Okay. Paul. Paul occurs in 153 verses of the King James Bible. So on the right side of the ship, we found Paul in Romans 1, the name Paul. Romans 1 is the 1047th chapter of the Bible. And if we look at all mentions of Paul the name Paul, Paul and Paul's, we see that the verse count becomes 158. Remember the total mentions of Peter, um, singular, was 158. Now we have the total mentions of Paul, verse count, 158. So they both have the number 153 and the number 158 in common. Let's demonstrate the King James Code. Paul, a servant of... Jesus Christ. Now we see the total count of this combination, 1,530, 153 times 10, and 222 chapters, a multiple of 74. Called to be an apostle separated unto the gospel of God. Let's go to Mark chapter 1. Remember Son of God 47 times? Son of God. Referring to Jesus 47 times. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Okay, we're going to copy that. And I'm going to show you that these 12 words, 37 is the 12th prime, and what I want to point out here is that make it so you guys can see there we go that is 12 words and uh, 47 letters again son of God referring to Jesus 47 times find 47 times in the New Testament okay let's go back to um, Romans 1 now we're in the epistles of Paul 1047th um, chapter of the Bible in the epistles of Paul, we'll find the 47th book. Okay, we're following the instructions. We're casting our net on the right side of the ship. We've got the 47th book, 2 Corinthians. In 2 Corinthians is the 153rd chapter of the New Testament. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We're going to go down to the 153rd word. And if you can see that is the word had in verse 7. You can see the verse count there at the bottom left. 153 words selected. We have what? This treasure in earthen vessels. Now, where are the earthen vessels? Okay. What's the treasure? It's the Word of God. Let's look at the word treasure. Treasure occurs 37 times in the King James Bible, and there are 47 books that do not contain the word treasure, but it occurs 37 times. What's probably the most famous treasure? Would be the Ark of God it occurs 37 times. So treasure, Ark of God combined for 74. Value of the name Jesus. How about Ark of the Lord? That also occurs 37 times. So we see the total count go up to uh, 111. These are all numbers that are part of the, this code. We just take treasure out. We have Ark of God, Ark of the Lord. Combined 
37 and 37, that's uh, 74, dog of the name Jesus. And uh, let's, uh, let's examine the construction of the ark. Okay. Exodus 25. Let's back up. And they shall make an ark of shittim wood. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof, and thou shalt overlay it with pure gold. Pure gold occurs 39 times in the Bible. That is the number of books in the Old Testament. And it is made of shittim wood. And that occurs 27 times in the Bible. 27 books in the New Testament. And... 27 and 39 are, is 66, the number of books in your Bible. And what did they put in the ark? The Word of God. You know, the tables of stone. And this isn't the only uh, meat pattern here. Uh, so the Ark of the Covenant, pure gold, shit and wood, as were some of the other uh, um, furniture. But shit and wood and brass. Okay. The altar was made of shit and wood and brass. Go, that's in verse, uh, that's in 27. And thou shalt make an altar of shittim wood, five cubits long and five cubits broad. The altar shall be four square, and the height thereof shall be three cubits. Five, five squared. Five, the name Jesus. We think the number five, J-E-S-U-S, -S, five letters, the name Jesus. But we have brass and shittim wood combined, 153. And what did they burn on the altar? The cattle. Clean cattle, of course. But we see that this is all... Uh, connected. We're in Exodus 27, 27 um, uh, books in the New Testament, chapter 77, Christ equals 77, uh, church found 77 times in the King James Bible in 76 verses, 77 plus 76 being 153. 2 Corinthians 4, 7, 4, 7 pattern, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Now let's, uh, let's go to... Um, Matthew 13. Let's look at a parable. And pick it up in verse 44. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure hid in a field. Okay, treasure hid. Let's demonstrate the King James Code. Phrase in a field. And we see that this combination produces 777. Seven, seven. 37 times 3 times 7. But if we just examine the New Testament occurrences, we see that it reduces down to 153. There's this number 153 encoded in the parables of Jesus. Parable. Parable, all forms of the word parable occur 47 times in the New Testament. Okay, let's go back to 2 Corinthians 4. Okay, we're in verse 7. The word have, 153rd word. We're going to go to the first occurrence of the word have in the Bible. And finally, we're going to go to Genesis chapter 1. And let's see where it takes us. It takes us to the creation of man. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So that word took us to have, and it is in the phrase, have dominion over what? The fish of the sea. Isn't that what Jesus perfectly demonstrated in John 21? His dominion over the creation, his dominion over those 153 fish to cause them to be in that spot for them to be caught. And here we can see, if you look at this, God speaks 47 words. Get it right? 47 words. See it there on the bottom of left? God speaks 47 words when he creates man in his image. And so here we are at the heart of the code, right here, this number 47, where it is significant. And not only that, let's look at the 666th word in Genesis 1. 
and that's going to take us to verse 28 in the word and, which begins the phrase and have again dominion over fish, the fish of the sea. Remember, I told you the, the two the two are connected, right? This is God um, now telling the them, the man and the woman, this information. Before he just said, "Let us make man in our image and give them dominion." So what's neat about this? It says, "And God blessed them, and God said unto them, let's count the words, be fruitful and multiply. Get that right. Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth." You see in the lower left, 37 words that God speaks to man in this first. Um, in verse 28. So we're going to copy that. And we're going to, we're going to count. We already counted the words. We're going to count the letters now. Because there was 37 words there. And we can see the total, the ordinal is 1,777. But let me zoom in on this 37 words 153 letters there's your 153 great fishes because what's significant about this these are the words that God's speaking this is the word of God to man the man and the woman 37 words there 153 letters let's go back to Genesis 1 pick it up in verse 29 look at the remaining 74 words that God speaks to them, the man and the woman. Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to every thing that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, life, underline that word, I have given every green herb for meat. There's that word, children. Have ye any what meat? The last word spoken by God on the sixth day is the word meat. Look at that phrase shall be. This is the first occurrence of the phrase shall be. 666 chapters. We're going to make the connection between 666 and meat. Okay, uh, let's see. Let me uh, bring this up again. Put my cursor over it. Now you can see 74 words here that God speaks. Right? That's the value of the name Jesus. Right? What are we supposed to eat? We're going to go to John chapter 6 here shortly. But I wonder, this verse is referring us back to Genesis 1.11. Because our food was created on the third day. Let's go to the third day where God speaks the 27 words. Genesis 1.11. And God said... Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. Okay, so I like those 27 words there. We're in verse 11. Remember, remember 111. 37 times 3. The number of words that God speaks to man is 37 words, and then followed up by 74 words. 37 plus 74 is 111. Now, and that's referring us back to Genesis 1.11, 111, multiple of 37. But just think about the number 11, Jesus Christ, 11 letters. It's referring us back to Jesus Christ. It's all pointing to Jesus, right? What are we supposed to eat? Again, we're going to go to John chapter 6. Um, this is profound. If you really think about this, this code, what, what it's showing us here. And I'm showing you this number 666 here, and this phrase shall be, it is not a coincidence. Okay, before we move on, let's uh, let's examine the code that I'm talking about here in Genesis chapter 1. In Genesis chapter 1, God speaks a total of 343 words. That's 7 times 7 times 7. Therefore, the number 7 is encoded in the King James Bible. He speaks 185 words. That takes us to the creation of the beasts. Once he begins the creation of man... Where he says, and God said, let us make man in our image, beginning from the words that he speaks in Genesis uh, chapter 1, verse 26 to the end, is 158 words. Remember Peter? Total mentions of Peter singular, 158 times. 
all mentions of Paul, 153 or 158 verses. Okay, because 158 is 47 plus 37 plus 74. The 47 words that God speaks when he creates man, and then the remaining 111 words that he speaks to the man and the woman after they are created. This is the heart of the code. It forms the basis. These numbers are encoded um, throughout the King James Bible, namely the number 7, 47, 37, and the second multiple of 37, which is 74. Value of the name Jesus. 47, the value of the word beast. So we're going to see a very neat pattern with this 185 words plus 158 words, which equals 343. 185, that's 37 times 5. 158, if you reverse that, 851, that's 37 times 23. But we're going to go to Matthew. At the end of the video, we're going to go to Matthew chapter 27. We're going to see something very profound, and namely the encryption on the cross that Pilate wrote. Okay, back to Genesis 1. Let's look at verse uh, 31. Remember, Revelation 13, 18, 31 words. Now we're in the 31st verse of Genesis 1. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Sixth occurs exactly 47 times in the King James Bible. So now we're going to go to the sixth chapter of the Gospel of John. And we're going to see something a very profound pattern in John chapter 6. And let's pick it up in around verse 52. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Watch this. Then Jesus saith unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. See the word except occurs 74 times in the King James Bible. The name Jesus has a value of 74. God speaks 74 words when he's defining our food. And 47 of those mentions are in the New Testament. So we have the 47, 74 right there except that we are in the 74th uh, chapter of the New Testament. Value the name Jesus. Okay, except ye. Let's look at a pattern here. Eat the flesh of the Son of Man. And you can see that this combination produces 666 and 592 verses 592 that's a multiple of 74 as well let me show you this is not a coincidence we're going to go to the first occurrence of the word eat in the bible genesis 216 216 that's six times six times six genesis 216 this is the 47th verse of the bible and Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden, okay, every tree of the garden, let's go to the word garden, okay, occurs in 47 verses of the Bible, and just think about the garden that the number 47 takes us to in the New Testament. I'll let you look at that for yourself, but the word garden occurs 47 times in the Old Testament and 47 verses of the Bible. Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Eat, case sensitive, as found in this verse, freely eat, combined, 666. Though the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Let's say, phrase, not eat. occurs 47 times in the King James Bible. I'm telling you, 47 is the number of the beast, not that it's an inherently evil number. It's actually the number of the beast referring to there's the lamb. But there's a fake, a phony coming who claims this number as his name. We're getting ready to elect the 47th president of the United States, people. Pay attention. 
And another thing, this is the 47th verse of the Bible, Genesis 2, 1, 6, 2, 16. The total, two, verse 16 and 17 combined for 47 words, 39 spoken by God. That's the number of books in the Old Testament. But here again, the 47 just encoded in um, Genesis 2, 16. And what happens after they eat, they eat the fruit? Uh, this video is getting too long, so I, I meant to go into Genesis 2 and 3, but we'll maybe do that in the Revelation 666 series of videos. But I want to finish this video off showing you a very profound pattern. We're going to go to uh, Matthew chapter 27, verse 37. Matthew 27, verse 37. I'll show you um, the crucifixion encoded in Genesis 1. And set up over his head his accusation written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Okay, we're going to examine the encryption on the cross. This is Jesus. 158. Remember the 158 words that God speaks regarding man, 47 when he creates them, followed by the 111 words for the total of 158. This is Jesus, the man. Behold, the man, for it is the number of a man. This is Jesus, the king of the Jews. Oops, if I could spell. There it is, 343. The seventh cube number, seven times seven times seven. The 343 words that God speaks in Genesis 1, Jesus being the Word of God. So I told you the 158 plus 85 or 185 plus 58, the King of the Jews, 185, 37 times 5. Now, if we look at the full encryption on the cross, if you put the four Gospels together, this is Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Ten words, 37 letters. And in this video, um, I, I only scratched the surface of the patterns that are related to 666, 47, 74, this code. I glossed over this video was originally I started making it was going to be like an hour and a half long two hours and I, I trimmed it down but this code is real this pattern is real the King James Bible is the preserved Word of God there are 37 genes in the mitochondrial DNA okay um, let's look at that uh, God speaks 37 words to Eve What does he say to her? Genesis 3.13. Oops. There we go. Let's just do this. Notice they're naked down here. Right? The word naked. 40, in, in, in chapter 2, they, and they were naked and not ashamed. Naked 47 times. And then we get to uh, chapter 3. Naked is mentioned again. If we count here to the end, it's number 46. There are 46 chromosomes. Uh, so it's verse 13, and the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? Seven words. And then when he, uh, unto the woman he said again, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception, and sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and she shall rule over thee. Thirty words there. So the seven and thirty, that's thirty-seven words that God speaks to the woman after they eat. Of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Remember, he, the first 37 words that he speaks, that the, the good seed, right? The serpent came and corrupted it. Now God is speaking these 37 words, putting the good seed back in to the woman for the prophecy, the, the good seed being um, Jesus Christ. The, this, this prophecy, it's all, it's all connected, it's all tied together. What is significant about these 37 words that God speaks to the woman is that there's 37 genes in the mitochondrial DNA, and the mitochondrial DNA is where we get uh, 
are passed down from the mother, the mother only. It's the seed of the woman. And in the mitochondrial DNA, the, uh, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cells. It burns the sugars and, and produces heat. And our body temperatures are exactly 37 degrees Celsius. Okay? And this prophecy, um, the first words that God speaks to the woman that's recorded in the Bible is Genesis 3.13 specifically to the woman only okay and lord god said to the woman what is this that thou hast done three one three three thirteen here's wisdom let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast for it is the number of a man is number six hundred three score and six you see it has a value of three hundred and thirteen twenty six letters twenty six letters in the uh english alphabet and the letters compose the words jesus being the word of god this so number 666 is related to the man and that man is none other than jesus um, if you want to see some more 666 patterns proving this uh doing the revelation 666 series specifically the video um titled behold the man revelation 666 i hope you enjoyed this video uh, thanks for watching god bless and Bye for now.